Um, my name is Taylor Helms, and I'm the Director of Operations and on the French Horn, Piano, and Composition faculty for Z-Tunes Music School. And uh, speaking for all of us, I want to say that I am so excited that we're hosting these clinics. And um, tonight, especially, I'm really excited to welcome Atlanta Symphony Orchestra bassist, Associate Principal Bass, Gloria Jones Allgood, as our clinician today. Uh, Ms. Allgood joined the ASO at age 20 in 1984. Joining the ASO as a section player, she was promoted to assistant principal in 1989 and to associate principal in 2001. Additionally, she served as acting principal base during the 2013-14 and 2014-15 seasons. She teaches privately, coaches the Atlanta Symphony Youth Orchestra, participates in the talent development program, and has performed in many chamber groups around Atlanta. For today's clinic, we will stay on mute while Ms. Allgood works through the GMEA 910 bass audition excerpt. I suggest you have your copy of the excerpt and a pencil ready to make notes. If you can type any questions that you have into the chat, and once she's done with her presentation, uh, we'll address those questions um, at the end. And without Great. further ado, I'll hand it off to you, Ms. Allgood. Okay, well, I just want to say this is an opportunity that I wish I'd had when I was your age, and uh, I'm happy to share with you as much as I can about this attitude, which I was just telling Taylor, I think is rather hard. Um, and the reason it's hard is it gets around the base uh, in a rapid fashion. And you've got to kind of realize that um, you want to be what I call a lazy shifter. You want to stay as close to one spot as you can for as long as you can. Um, so I'm going to go over some fingerings with you guys and uh, talk to you about how I actually had to practice this and really look at it. So um, I'll tell you what I did to do that. The other thing I want to talk about while we're doing this is the actual um, form that these judges have in front of them. So I'll talk a little bit about what's expected uh, for them to hear from you. And uh, there are three things, only three things. One is tone quality, one is intonation, and the other is musical effect. That's basically phrasing um, how you communicate that this etude is not just notes coming at you on the page, but it actually has expression. So um, we want to talk a little bit about that too. So I'm going to um, play through this for you. Now the metronome marking I noticed is 94. Let me just put it on that because I want you to hear what this is going to be. Um, let me see if I can get it to go up to that. Here we go. Now, let me just emphasize, this is finished product. And even if you don't get up to this tempo, practice it with a metronome. Cannot emphasize that enough. Um, even if you are playing it twice as slow, because I've always thought if a kid comes into an audition and they play something twice as slow, but it's really accurate, I would vote 100% for that person and instead of fast and sloppy, right? So that's what we're after. And since we're going to be listening for intonation and tone quality, um, you really do want to make sure you can produce that. Now, you'll notice there's two um, ways to play this. There's this guy, right? It's fast with two notes per thing. That's what those little lines are. Now, we're going to do A, which is on the bottom. It has dots on every single note. Now, so that staccato is not really bounce like that. It's more, so it's right near the frog. You want to stay here. You do not want to get out into the upper part of the bow. Stay here. So I'm going to put the metronome on, and it's going to feel a little bit weird to you, I think, on, on Zoom, but you'll get the idea of the tempo. I don't know if you can hear my metronome. But anyway, so that's the tempo. So you can feel me trying to rush, right? It really is very easy to rush this. So learn it slow. <laughs> and when you get it up to this tempo, you'll see it. You have to hold it. Thank you. 
it's a, it's a hard etude. So let me just point out to you what I did there at the end. You can see at the end of the second line, there's a little sign. That's gonna tell you when you come back at the repeat, you're gonna jump to that very last line. Um, and so that's called a da capo al segne, which means go to the sign. Um, the DC means da capo, which means go back to the beginning. So um, if you haven't ever had to do that before, it can be a little confusing. Now, I know from past Allstate things, they don't get to the end. <laughs> so I don't know what segment they will ask, how far you'll get. Uh, you may even get to the third line. They'll say, thank you. I don't know how much time you'll get. Um, also, if this is done on video, you may have to do the whole thing. So I would be prepared to play the whole thing. I, I, think they're, they're I, think they're submitting a, I think they're submitting a recording, right? Oh, okay, so you don't have to do the whole thing. <laughs> okay, so you heard that at top dollar speed. Here's my advice. I'm not so sure I would do it that fast. It really does move quite rapidly. So tone quality, you have to be careful when you're doing what I'm demonstrating because it almost can get real tacky, ticky tacky kind of. So you want to practice this bow stroke. I don't let the bow off the string. I do not let it go all like that. No, no, no. It's stuck. This is very much an orchestral, um, like Beethoven uses this a lot. You know? So you're really controlling the string. Um, so you really want to make sure that this is the bow stroke that you're using. Now the intonation, super, super important. If you're in this key of D major, you've got to worry about F sharp being high enough. Just those first five notes, establish D major. C sharp. So every chance you get, get into the upper level of the D string. To some of you, this may be foreign territory. He's got good fingerings in here. I do recommend that you take a look at them. He uses a line when he's um, shifting. He uses that as a line. Do not worry too much about his system. But I do like his fingerings. This is a Sturm. I studied this whole book plus volume two. <laughs> volume two. Wow, it's hard. <laughs> the guy has no mercy. So um, I will be eager to hear what you have to say in chat because um, you know, I, there are different people with different issues with this thing. Now, as far as musical effect, we were talking about that. There are dynamics in this etude that will help you with phrasing. Notice he starts out piano, he goes to a crescendo, and then he does these hairpins, which means that you're going to crescendo in the middle of the bar and come away uh, dynamically. So here's a good example. You start out soft. Crescendo, here we go. You want to end up there. So you may want to circle that E in the second bar. Back off. Piano. Crescendo. Here it goes. Now he puts a sort sondo there if he means business. So really try to follow these. Bar 13, which is on the fourth line, the first bar there. You're going to go to the G. A is in the middle of the hairpin. Whatever note is in the middle of this hairpin is the note you're going to go to, and you're going to back away. So um, let me just tell you a little bit, too, about practice method. When I first looked at this, the first thing I did was I slurred two. So I took it very slow. method it gives my brain kind of time to see what's on the page and see where I'm supposed to go it helps me see accidentals um, the third line you start to get the accidentals big time you've got a sharp a natural you got G sharp and then you've got the continuation of the G sharp 
So you really want to make sure that you're marking these spots that are just kind of tricky. That third line, that's bar nine there. So the A sharp, big arpeggio. I would toss over to the B string here. E string. questions Taylor if people have chat questions that'd be fine yeah yeah you guys can just type them into the chat um, if you have anything that you want to ask or address yeah, it might help I was telling Taylor I've numbered my bars so that on the outside there it's like one five nine thirteen seventeen and twenty one so that um, when you're asking me a question you can refer to the bar number that might be good. Like if you need a fingering for something, I'm happy to help you with that. Uh, yeah, we have a question about that. Um, iPhone asks, uh, could you go over the fingering in the second measure? Second measure, okay. So here's what he's got. Um, I think it's actually a good fingering. He puts a four on the D string. I know this part is almost microscopic, <laughs> but he, he's gonna go like this. So it's O, E. He's got a four there, but it's going to be there. Four. So you're going to four, two. Cross to a four. There's the one right across the street. Harmonic G. Four, two, four, one. So when you see that little D on under that line, that means D string. Sometimes you'll see Roman numerals, so that the G string is Roman numeral one, D is two, A is three, E is four. So if you see Roman numerals, that's what that means. Um, he uses actual note names for the strings. Hope that helps. Yeah. Anybody else? Any any questions you want to ask Miss Allgood? Going once, <laughs> going twice. Don't be shy. No question is too, uh, you know, dumb. It's really, there's no dumb question for this. This is a very tricky thing. So um, let me show you another practice method too that I use. And this is with rhythms. You can do things like this. fingerings. So um, I would say that that's probably primary when you're learning something like that. But um, the other thing I just want to emphasize, the tone quality, they're listening for that. They, they grade it one to 10, intonation one to 10, and musical effect one to 10. So those three things are what we're looking for. And that's why I went over the dynamics. If you look really closely, it helps to zero in on a bar I'm looking at bar 17, for instance. I'll try to crescendo to that. I'll back off, crescendo. Notice how slow I'm going, right? If I go, you're probably not going to hear it. <laughs> but if I do it fat, uh, normal. Get out in the bow. 
You just can't do the spelling strong out here. It's not gonna work. Any more questions, you guys? Come on. <laughs> well, you, you, are you, uh, Miss Allgood, you covered a lot of ground. You gave them a lot to chew on, so. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of information. Um, the other thing I just wanna touch on are the scales. Um, I was reading what their requirements are. And for you guys, you have slur two. I would recommend that. Um, or separate, in, you need to do separate arpeggios. But I prefer to slur two, and I do use vibrato. So if you go. for a nice sound if you don't try to push your bass to be really loud. If it's very loud, you can't get a beautiful sound. So think of your scales as a thing of beauty. Don't shy away from being real pretty. many of you are familiar with the minor scales they do intimidate a lot of people but think of melodic as going up when you're going up coming down when you're going down if you'll think of that it should help you figure out how to do the you know, half steps helps you with the music theory end of things <laughs> a little bit and on the scales just so you know the three things are tone quality that's where the vibrato comes in fingering accuracy this means that when you shift up do you end up on the four or where do you end up at the top of the scale essentially and the arpeggio now arpeggios are tricky on the bass because you can end up doing something like this shifting a lot, right? You can shift a lot. Like this. So you want to make sure you avoid big, big shifts like this. And the only way to do that is to get up into the uh, positions that are right up here. So you go shift here. Try this. Put a two on the A string. One across. So you look like you're barely moving. So that's where your lazy shifting comes in. Look for the most efficient way to stay on your instrument. Don't try to go you know, up and down. Up and, down. <laughs> um, and on bass, it's very obvious when you're doing that. So hopefully I'm hitting enough you know, topics for people. I think so, for sure. I had one thought. Um, yeah. I know at the beginning you were talking about the, so it's it's marked quarter note equals 94. Um, and I, we've done a couple of these with like the cello and the violin and stuff. And I had some students who were concerned. It seemed like they were really concerned about getting up to that metronome marking. Mm -hmm. But that's not a, that's not really, if that's not, definitely not the most important thing is to. No, I would say, and let me tell you a personal story. This is very funny. All my students know this story because I tell it to them all the time. When I was in ninth grade, I auditioned for Allstate. And then when we got there to the orchestra, we had to do another audition for seating. So the year I did it, believe it or not, Star Wars came out that year. So you have this, you know, the really fast triplets, John Williams, you know, really fast. So. I knew the music. I, was, I had heard the movie music and I knew, but when I saw the music, for some reason, I was this. Okay. So I played it that tempo. I got first chair. Okay. 
Now I got in the rehearsal, it was this. And I was literally going, what in the heck? I had no idea where we were. <laughs> So, you know, it just shows if you play something slow and accurate, you may win the first chair. You never know. So, you know, I, I had gotten it completely correct uh, rhythmically and in tune. And they probably thought, well, she played it right. <laughs> and I was ninth grade. So you just, I was scared to death. <laughs> so, you know, you learn by doing. <laughs> and here you are. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> So, yeah, now I'm a little more careful about tempos, but, <laughs> but that was uh, my personal story of playing things slow and winning the position, so you just never know. Well, so that's, awesome. um, that's why I say, even if you go in and play, let's just assume you came in and played this A2, you know, like this. <laughs> You've got the tone quality, the intonation, and the musical effect. So that's what you're after. And I just want to um, really impress that upon you. Now, sight reading always scares people too. So sight reading, let me just tell you that the last note of the piece is going to be the key that you're in. We live in Western music territory, and therefore the last note is D in this case. So you look at the key signature, there's two sharps, that makes it D major. Um, if we saw a uh, B flat, it'd be F minor. <laughs> but for now, we're going to be, um, you know, assuming this is D major. So always look at your key signature, numero uno. Look at your tempo marking. You know that allegro moderato, not too fast, right? And then you look at the rhythm, right? So you're just trying to get an, an estimate. When you're looking at this, take a moment to look at the music. Do not just start playing. That would be my other piece of advice. <laughs> really look ahead, even finger it before you start playing it out loud. I think it's very helpful to just kind of cheat a tiny bit. Take a minute and so do it. Actually, actually that, that is, that's, you know, they're certainly gonna sight read other things, but I will say that the great thing about this year is there is no sight reading on the audition. Oh, nice. Since it's taped. Nice. You just... locked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, we had a question from uh, Cole who asked, uh, so was that sight reading? I think maybe he was talking about you playing Star Wars. Um, it was not. I, I literally had prepared it. It's so it was, funny it that I won that audition. I, you know, I'm thinking to myself, how could they miss that? It was these two ladies. They were, it was in a hotel, and the ladies were sitting there. They were very nice, and I played it really slow. <laughs> maybe everybody else did, too. I don't know. <laughs> I have laughed and laughed about it. I mean, it really, it's one of those life experiences that, uh, and it was the only year I did Allstate. So for what it's worth. <laughs> I know I have, I uh, just on, uh, just thinking about that. I know a lot of teachers who teach, um, I mean, you know, this, this works out sometimes and sometimes not, but I, I know a lot of teachers who teach practice it, uh, 20 clicks too slow all the way up until the, like the day before the performance and then wow. the tempo. I'm like, that would give me anxiety, but, <laughs> but I get. The, I understand the point is that it's more important to learn all the other parts of the music before the, the speedy part. Yeah, and the other thing that happens in auditions, and even if you're recording yourself at home, you're going to get a little nervous, and what nerves do, it speeds up your heart, it creates physical um, manifestations of nerves, so your heart rate's going to go up, which is going to make you go faster, naturally, <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't hurt to start a little slower and uh, believe me nerves are still very real just because i've been in the orchestra gosh 37 this is my 37th year every now and then there are some real nerve-wracking situations and you feel the same stuff you feel the sweaty palms and the you know kind of lightheaded a little bit i have a student who feels like she's going to faint so some people really really get into the mental problems of it but do not let that bother you you have to play beyond it it's going to be a problem. It's going to be there. So you got to get friendly with your nerves, you know? So um, there are professional musicians that take drugs to combat it. And I did that one time and never did it again. It made me too sleepy. <laughs> so I was just exhausted. I was trying to stay away. But, uh, drugs are no good for me either. They yeah, don't. it's hard. It's hard when you're really, really nervous. But hopefully when you record this at home, you take your first one. It most likely will be your best one. Um, I can also tell you that because you get fatigued and 
make little mistakes after that. So I would say maybe take your first take on that. Okay. Well, if we don't have any more questions, then we can go ahead and, and wrap this up. Uh, huge, enormous thank you, Miss Gloria, for your valuable insight. I know I learned a lot. I don't even think they <laughs> well, I wish all of you guys luck. I can't see your faces, but uh, I hope you do really well. And uh, just remember that every audition is a learning experience. And, uh, you know, you may not be perfect, but it may be the, the best one that they're hearing. So you just never know until you get the finished product. Exactly. All right. Yeah, I, I double that. Good luck, everybody, on your audition. Uh, and look out for more communication from Z-Tunes about upcoming clinics for Allstate and lessons and all that. Uh, and have an awesome week. Thanks, Have everybody. a good night, guys. Thank Have you. Television.